I think part of the Australian uh, success here relates to the fact that the Prime Minister chose wisely to listen to people who knew what they were talking about and who didn't. So, for example, uh, he declared a pandemic in Australia but well before the World Health Organisation did so and banned at some cost because he was accused of being racist and all sorts of things like that, flights from China very early on. Uh, and I think both of those factors reflect very well uh, on he and those around him who were advising him to take those courses of action. But it does raise the question again of China. You have, I think, courageously and insightfully uh, indicated that uh, there are many serious questions that need to be put before the Chinese. They should not be let off the hook on. Uh, and uh, uh, one of those uh, would be, I think, uh, uh, why it took them so long to admit when it, it must have been obvious for a lot longer that there was not only a problem, but that uh, this thing moved from human to human. Um, why was it that when they locked down flights in and out of Wuhan to other parts of China, they didn't lock down the international flights? Uh, what is the relationship between those various uh, uh, laboratories around the uh, the region that are quite close to the wet markets? Is there any linkage there? Has there been real transparency? Um, the danger here is that China, having been instrumental in, if not, if it's too simplistic perhaps to say they created the problem, certainly letting it get out of hand, they now want to be able to paint themselves as the heroes who are solving the problem for the globe. How do we hold them to real account? Yeah, that's a very important question in my view. I, I published an article three or weeks ago asking six questions of, of Xi Jinping that I felt the Chinese government needed to answer. Needless to say, those questions have not yet been answered. Uh, though uh, we are, I think, getting a little bit more insight uh, into uh, the realities. Uh, it, for example, I think we now know that it probably wasn't a so-called wet market where uh, the, the virus first uh, crossed to humans, that it was more likely one of two laboratories in Wuhan engaged in research into zoonoses, uh, viruses or other pathogens that can cross from animals to people. And uh, a good article in the Washington Post a week or so ago uh, published some State Department uh, 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 wires that essentially uh, raised a flag about the safety uh, precautions being taken at one of those laboratories. It's important to stress that it's not being said uh, and wasn't being said by, by the State Department, Department officials who went to Wuhan that there was an engineered virus, uh, but simply that research into natural viruses was being done in a sloppy way. So that's a kind of partial answer to, to my first question. Second question hasn't really been answered. When did the central government know there was a serious problem? We know that the local officials in, in Wuhan and indeed provincial officials in Hubei did cover up the seriousness of the situation so that they could uh, keep the show on the road in, in Wuhan, including some very well-attended party functions, uh, and didn't uh, fess up. Uh, until the 20th or thereabouts of January, that they had a serious problem on their hands. We don't know how much the central government knew, uh, but my guess is they did know uh, well before January the 20th that there was a problem. Uh, and I do think we need more answers to, to questions about why it was that the Chinese government and the World Health Organization took so long to recognize and to acknowledge uh, publicly that there was a very serious epidemic of food uh, in that part of China. Uh, on the question of flights, it's a very murky question. I thought on the basis of records that I saw that flights had continued to fly from Wuhan to Western destinations after the, the ban uh, on flights on the 23rd. Uh, it looks, though it's not quite clear yet, as if uh, flights didn't go from Wuhan, although they were recorded as being from Wuhan. It's claimed that they now, it's now claimed that they went from Guangzhou rather than Wuhan. Uh, I wish I could say that the case was closed. I think that there's reason still to be a little suspicious. Uh, I have yet to see an authoritative account of what happened at Wuhan airport 
uh, in January, and I've yet to be entirely convinced that no flights left there after the 22nd. Uh, so that's still, I think, uh, case not closed. Um, and then, of course, th there are some bigger questions that uh, have only partly been answered. Uh, how many people actually died in China yeah. to date uh, of, of COVID-19? They just increased the number that they acknowledged had died in Hubei by 50%, rather too neatly by 50%, I think. Uh, so that, that, I think, is another file that's still uh, open, and I could go on, that the Chinese government has some serious answering to do to questions like these, if it's to have any credibility. Uh, and I think its attempt to bend the narrative and claim that actually it's the savior of humanity that's going to provide you with the tests and masks that you need is one of the most shameless bits of propaganda that I've seen since the end of the Cold War. In fact, it's a very disturbing feature of the last couple of months that the Chinese government has resorted to the kind of disinformation that we had previously associated with Russia. Uh, the New York Times just reported that uh, it was almost certainly Chinese agents who were responsible for trying to sow panic in the United States uh, with WhatsApp and other messages about an impending nationwide lockdown early in the crisis. I argued a year ago that we were already in Cold War II and it was time to stop beating about the bush. I, I think the pandemic has revealed that very clearly. Anybody who thought we'd be sort of joining forces against a common enemy has been sorely disappointed by the conduct of the Chinese government. And I find it frankly a scandal that a, a spokesman for the Chinese foreign ministry who tweeted conspiracy theories claiming that the virus in fact originated in the United States, this man is still in his job and that that surely reflects a great deal of bad faith on the Chinese side. Yeah I think uh, you finished that article uh, I think brilliantly you said China has a problem it is not the three body, body problem which reminds us that the Chinese people are capable of great literature just as Chinese researchers capable of great science. China's problem like Russia's before 1991 is the one party problem and so long as a fifth of humanity are subject to the will of an unaccountable, corrupt and power-hungry organisation with a long history of crimes against its own people, the rest of the world is also at risk. Thank you for watching this episode. We appreciate your support. If you value vital conversations like this one, be sure to subscribe to the channel there and also click the notification bell to stay up to date with new releases.